Hello everyone and welcome to our project presentation of design of a voice modulated piano. We, the members of group A11, would like to start by thanking our course instructors Dr. Sajid Mohamin Choudhury and Anik Majumdar for giving us the opportunity to work in this project. We will start off with the outline. First, we will provide a short background. Then, we will sequentially describe the materials and softwares used, the working principle, simulation, implementation, and finally, demonstration of our project. We will end with the scope for future work and a short summary. Have you ever wondered how a piano works? In a traditional grand piano, there are 88 different keys, each one for playing a different tone. When a key is pressed, a hammer inside the piano strikes the strings from below, and the vibrations cause resonance in the soundboard playing a soothing tone. In a digital keyboard, there's a small onboard computer, pressure sensors, and a set of speakers. When a key press is detected, a synthetic sound is output through the speakers. In this project, our task is to construct such a digital piano. By resampling a given bass note, the rest of the tones has to be generated for playback. The key components used in this project are the STM32F7 discovery board, an Arduino Duo board, Arduino prototype shield. A speaker outputs the audio and a micro SD card is used to store the audio files. Among the softwares used in the project, the STM32 Cube IDE was perhaps the most important one. Some simulations was done using MATLAB and Proteus, and the hardware design was done in SOLIDWORKS. We will be discussing an overview of the working principle of a digital piano. The first step is the audio synthesis. Each octave in the piano has a 12 half step as shown here. The most basic scale is start from the C note. Our task was to take one of this note as our fundamental sample to generate other piano notes of different frequency by resampling. The frequency of a target note with respect to the base note A2 is defined by this equation. An audio tone can be resampled by first upsampling it by a ratio of P and then downsampling by Q. Upsampling is done by the sync function where the sample values are generated by the given formula. We have decided to use modular circuitry for our project. The Arduino Duo board is used for interfacing our custom keyboard. Prototype shield is used for generating output audio. These two are stuck on the discovery board which act as the brain of the digital piano. Finally, we will have an overview of the note playback method. When a key is pressed, Arduino Duo board reads the key press and sends an interrupt signal to the STM board along with the corresponding ID of the pressed key. The STM then loads the audio sample of the note and sends it to the digital to analog converter generating the output audio. Proteus was first used to simulate our custom digital to analog converter. We have used a R2R ladder design to make the 8-bit audio peripheral. As seen in the graph, the DAC was able to approximate the sign up with 256 level resolution. Now we will discuss how resampling has been implemented in our project. We will demonstrate our implementation using a short sinusoidal signal. We'll start off with upsampling. In this animation, the original signal is being upsampled by a factor of 3. So two new samples are interpolated between any two successive samples. This interpolation is done through the use of a sync function. As you can see, the sync does a weighted averaging of the original signal at the new sampling instances. The amplitude of the upsampled signal at the original sampling instances remains the same as the sync becomes zero everywhere else but the sampling instance. The function for upsampling is shown on the right. Downsampling refers to removing samples at a periodic interval from the upsampled signal. In the left-sided animation, we can see the downsampling operation being performed on the upsampled signal to get the final resampled signal. The function for downsampling is shown on the right. There are some practical limitations when resampling is performed on hardware. Since we are processing a large audio signal having 64,000 samples, we cannot process the total signal at once because there is not enough memory on our board. Again, because of the same memory constraints, we cannot upsample the signal at any arbitrary ratio. If a very large ratio is chosen, then the signal will not fit in memory. To satisfy the memory constraints, we have decided to break the signal into equal size slices, and we will perform resampling on one slice at a time. Let us see this in detail now. Here, the first slice is shown, and then we perform upsampling and downsampling operation on this slice. Similarly, we take the next slice and perform the same upsampling and downsampling operations. We append the final output to the end of the resampled version of the first slice. This is how we keep resampling and appending slices till the end of the signal. But as you can see, between the end of any slice and the beginning of the next slice, the extra samples for upsampling are not inserted. 
this is a source of error and this error can be minimized if we keep a sufficiently large slice length. For our purpose, we have kept the slice length 800, so the error is not that significant. The keyboard has 36 keys and these keys are read by the Arduino Dew board using polling method. The reason behind using Arduino Dew board is that the STM32 discovery board did not have enough input pins available. For key press detection, software debouncing of 100 millisecond was also implemented on the Arduino Dew. After a key press is detected, the Dew board generates an interrupt signal and a 6-bit binary ID of the key press is sent to the STM32 board. When the STM32 board receives the interrupt signal, the sample values of the corresponding node are read and stored inside a data buffer. A separate circular audio buffer is used for audio playback. When any new node is to be played, the data buffer values are copied over to the current position of the audio buffer pointer. The buffers are kept separate to avoid file corruption during reading. The audio pointer inside the circular buffer is driven by an 8 kHz timer interrupt. This interrupt periodically reads audio values from the audio buffer, sends the 8-bit audio samples to the ADC and resets the buffer value. This is how our digital keyboard plays notes. With all the explanations out of the way, we can finally see the actual piano in action. There is an onboard DAC with our microcontroller board that we have not used for our project. In future, if we can use the DAC, then the external circuitry can be minimized. Our current hardware setup allows us to place 36 different tones, ranging from C3 to B5. We can build a complete setup with 88 different keys. Also, when we press multiple keys together, the signals in the buffer add up and create a high amplitude tone. Ideally, we want the signals to add, but the amplitude to stay below a threshold. And finally, a piano key in real life produces different sounds depending on how hard the key is pressed by the finger. We haven't yet figured out how to implement that in our project. But if time provides, we wish to implement this feature in future. In this project, we have done audio resampling in hardware interfaced a custom keyboard to a microcontroller and implemented audio playback with timer interrupt and digital to analog converter. In a sense, the attempt to make a prototype digital piano was a success. We have reached the end of our presentation. Please feel free to ask any questions related to the project. Thank you very much for your patience.